in either if child's pose or some version of child's pose where you're folded forward feels comfortable, then start in child's pose. If that is not at all comfortable for your body, you might start lying down on your back um, with, the, with the knees bent. So either child's pose or reclining with knees bent. And as you settle in, start to deepen the breath. Sense the inhale and the exhale. Feel the ground beneath you, the air on your skin, and notice in whatever position you're in right now, where does your body make contact with your mat or your props? Where are you receiving direct support? Deep breath in. And take your time with the exhale. Deep breath in. And take your time with the exhale. Just like that, a slightly exaggerated volume on the in-breath and slow and easy on the out-breath. Take a moment now to walk the arms forward. If you're on your back, you can stretch the arms overhead. Find a bit of length, reaching gently as if the arms grew out of not the shoulders, but the back of the waistline. Easy in the head and neck and the jaw. If you're in the child's pose variation, you might come up to fingertips, see how that feels. And then lean over to one side. So whether you're on your back or you're in child's pose, you're in a gentle side bend. Breathe into the side of your waist and rib cage that is a little extra spacious right now. Gently change sides. And guide the breath into this side of the rib cage, the waist. Return to center. From center, ease your way to hands and knees for cat-cow. 
lifting the heart, arching the back, and then exhaling, rounding the spine, inhaling, lifting, opening, exhale, rounding. And just like that, moving into the back bend with the inhale, Halloween cat with the exhale. Now roll the hips and the shoulders around, the elbows can bend, the head can move. You use this rolling, spiraling movement to stretch, to unwind, to drop into the physical body. And return to tabletop once again. And now we'll change the pattern slightly as you exhale, glide back toward child's pose. It's not important how low the knee, the hips go, just that you lean back a bit and get, a, get some bit of arm stretch. And then glide yourself forward your back on, back in tabletop, back on hands and knees. Exhale, gliding back toward child's pose. And inhale, gliding forward to tabletop. And just like that, exhaling, inhaling, and again. The next time that you come forward, completely shift forward, come down onto your belly. Bend the knees and swing your feet side to side. The head can rest however it wants to. Return to center, stretch the legs out. Bring your hands so they're in a cactus position which means they'll probably be off the edges of your mat, unless your mat is like, uh, like twice the width. From here, bring your cactus arms just a little bit forward so that the elbows are almost at the same level as the, the shoulders. Adjust for comfort, of course. You can go further, further forward or back. Peel the chest forward. Zip up the belly, of course. Lift the head, the neck, the shoulders up, and then peel yourself back down. So a little bit of a kind of cobra meets a sphinx here. Zip up the belly, reach the legs back. Peel the chest up a little, and unpeel yourself, curling down. And do that again. Peel the chest up. And lower down. From here, reach. Now you can make the uh, make a pillow out of your hands if you like. The arms don't need to be in any particular position. We'll emphasize the work in the lower body. And zip up the belly and reach long through the right leg. Lengthen it out and raise the foot up off the mat. Stretching the hip flexors, engaging the back of the legs, and then lower back down. Do a couple more with that one leg. And zipped up belly, raise the leg, and then lower it. Keep the knee as straight as you can, reaching extra long. Squeeze the glutes as you lift. And two more, waking up the the length in the front body by strengthening and engaging the back body. And release that other side. Squeeze and lengthen. And lower the leg and again zip up the belly lengthen and lift this leg and lower. Continue like that.
Last one as you come down. Squeeze the glutes, reach the legs long, raise both the feet off the mat. Breathing here, breathing here, any amount. Gently lower down. Bring your hands now more of, into more of a cobra position, palms alongside the chest and the elbows bent. Now, if this arm position doesn't serve you, take one hand to your forehead and the other arm down low. So it's so option one is right hand down by your side, left hand underneath your forehead, and as you peel up the hand, the arm is there to help support the head a little bit. Then you can do two on one side, two on the other, or if the cobra position is okay, we'll do them all in cobra pose. Zip up the belly. Heel the chest forward. Allow there to be a bit of curve in the back of the neck. Let the curve migrate down into your upper back and then lay yourself down. Take your time. We're migrating the curve down the upper back. Peeling up, feel the curve in the back of the neck. Let your upper back join the gentle back bend. Maybe press a little bit more. Let your belly button come up off the mat. And then lay yourself back down. If you're doing the one arm version, you're lifting and lowering gently and then changing sides. One last round of the left and right, or lift up one last time. Lift the belly, let the tops of the thighs come up if you want. It is your practice, you decide how high to lift. And then slowly, slowly, really take your time as you come down. And when you're all the way back down, tuck the toes underneath, press the floor away and find a child's pose. Arms any way you like for this child's pose, and of course, knees as wide apart as you like for your child's pose. If there's any sense of pinchiness in the front crease of the hip, try the knees wider apart. Arms might stretch out, they might be resting, Feel into the body. Trust your intuition here. And gently roll on to one side in a fetal position, so the knees are bent. Knees are bent and you're lying down with your head either on blankets or resting on your own arm. The top arm reaches out in front of your chest. And as you're ready, draw your bow and arrow and unfurl the arm behind you. Come back onto your side and reach a little extra out in front of you with the top hand. And then draw your bow and arrow. You could do this with a straight arm too if you like that. Both ways will work. If one way feels like, ooh, I get a little more out of it, or if one way is much better tolerated by the shoulder or neck, choose, choose the way that works in your body today. I like to open up into the twist on the inhale and fold back in on the exhale. And come back to our starting position. Roll your shoulder, shrug your shoulder here. Now while you're shrugging your shoulder, you're gonna keep that kind of rolling back and rolling forward idea. 
Start to make elbow circles as your elbow goes behind you. You're opening up into the twist. And as your elbow circles around to the front, you're on your side again. So it's similar to what we were doing when we took the arm just across the body side to side. Now you might stay here if you like. Open up the arm so that it's straighter, expanding the size of your circles. The same idea though, whether it's a shoulder circle, an elbow circle, or the whole arm is involved. As you open up into the twist, the arm is going some amount behind you and circling around the front as you're coming onto your side. Good, now go the other way. Take your time with the movement. Let gravity help open up that twisty moment. And even in these circles, there's also a bit of a moment when your arm is out in front of you where you're reaching out. When you're ready, come into the twist and take a few breaths there. Just the spinal twist, no extra movement required. Feel free to reposition the head, the neck, one or both arms. You can reposition the legs too if you like. Deep breath in and take your time with the exhale. Deep breath in. And take your time with the exhale. Come on back to center. Stay on your side for a moment. Move the lower body. So we do clamshells for today's mission. If you hate clamshells, you might love these. Today's mission is like a clamshell movement, but you're going to tip. Let the knee tip. Let the hip rock. This is for mobility more than strength. So we moved in and out of that twisty shape with the upper body just a moment ago, and now we're letting the lower body do the opening up and, and then rocking onto the side. So the hip, the whole pelvis tilts with the lifted leg. And then Take the bent knee, the top leg, and make generous circles in the air. Reverse it. One last circle, take your time going around. And release, change sides. As you come over to the other side, we'll start with the upper body movement. Either draw your bow and arrow or open and close with a straight arm. Arm reaches out in front and inhale, open up behind you and exhale and come back. Inhale, open and exhale, coming back just like that. Continue like this.
and then open up into the twist and stay there. Breathe here. Let the breath fill into the upper chest. Across the collarbones, out to the shoulders. And take another couple breaths here. And then gather the arm back in, reclining on your side, and the lower body takes its turn moving, rocking the knee and the hip. And with this, since it is more the mobility that we're focusing on, you can use that bit of momentum to make it feel like a rocking movement. That's completely fine. Now when you're ready, make circles in the air with the knee. There's still the rocking of the hip. So the pelvis is allowed to tilt as the leg is circling around. The only thing we're trying to keep fixed is you're, you're staying on that one side, not really rolling onto your back. Go the other way. And one last circle. And release. Now spin yourself around and find your wall. We'll use the feet on the wall. So think of, it looks like Shavasana, but think of Tadasana of standing in mountain pose in terms of the energetic quality. I'm going to squiggle in here. And I like to bend one knee first while I stretch the other leg out. I can get myself kind of scooched in and pretty close to where I need to be by measuring just with the one leg. Our legs are most of the time pretty close to the, to the same length, so we should be in the, in the neighborhood. And then stand on the wall with your left foot. Keep your right knee bent, zip up your belly, bring your right knee into your chest. Hold wherever makes sense for you, on your clothing, behind the thigh, around the shin. And while you're hugging the right knee in, relax your shoulders, roll your head a little, side to side. And stand on the wall, and you're standing on the wall with the heel right at the floor or right at your baseboard, as low as you can get the leg. Thigh bone moving down toward the floor, but the foot almost feeling like it wants to, to slide up the wall. It is not actually moving, but as your left thigh bone moves down toward the floor, the left foot is thinking of moving upward. That's the energy in the muscles. Now for me, I've got really tight hip flexors. When I employ that action, I really feel the hip flexor stretch in the front of the, the left hip and the thigh. Continue to stand on the wall and take your right knee out to the right and back in. We're isolating the movement of this leg from all that stabilizing of the other leg. 
So actively engaging, you know, so that the whole body will be better able to relax. And when the knee goes out to the side this time, leave it there. Standing on the wall, zipping up the belly. Relax the back of the neck. Let the head rest. The right hand can support the leg. It can rest on, on the inner thigh if you want, kind of more of an encouraging the stretch position. Whichever works for you is good. Now gently bring the leg back. And bend both knees. Kind of check in for a moment. Test it out. Stretch both legs out. For the purpose of comparing, does one leg feel different than the other? Does one hip feel different? Does one foot feel different? And now let's switch. Right leg stays on the wall, left knee bends. Get things organized first. The right thigh moving down. And even though the right heel is as low as it can be on the mat or on your baseboard, the idea is that the energy is about to lift the foot to slide it up the wall. Keep that, bring your left knee into your chest, holding wherever it makes sense on this side. And the abs are on here. So it's kind of a soft pose, but it's also kind of a worky pose all at once. The position allows us to get really stretched out and long with some support. And the wall lets us work the, the strength building part while we're getting all that glorious length and support. Abs stay on. Standing legs stay steady. And now it's just the left knee that goes out to the side and back again. Take your time out to the side, any amount, and back again. Standing leg nice and steady out to the side, and we stay here. Left hand is either supporting from the outer thigh or encouraging from the inner thigh. Breathe here. On an exhale, bring the knee back in. Bring both knees into the chest and gently rock side to side. Rock as much as you like. Let it, let the rocking motion massage your back. And now take the knees together in circles. A different pattern of massaging the back. Notice what that feels like on your lower back, across the back of the pelvis and the sacrum. When you're ready, reverse. Take your legs up in the air. Take your arms up in the air and be floaty with your arms and legs. I call this baby astronaut because you're floaty like you're in zero gravity and you're moving in, in a way that I know you're efforting, but let it feel a little floaty and effortless. Move the wrists a bit and the, the ankles and the knees and the elbows and move a little from the shoulders and the hips again. Not a lot of effort, just a little bit of floaty joint lubricating goodness. And release. Touch the feet down. 
heel toe the feet, mat width or wider. Open the arms out generously. Slow, generous windshield wipers. To see how steady you can keep the pace as you sweep the knees all the way over to one side as far as they want to go and then linger there. Linger there, take a breath, maybe a couple of breaths there. And then start to slowly change sides and go all the way over to the other side and linger there for a few breaths. What does it feel like when you take a little extra time here? Just like that, the next time the knees go to the right, stay there. If you'd like to reach your left arm overhead, go ahead adding to the stretch in the left side body the left knee is reaching down to the front of your mat while the arm reaches away from it gently change sides and the knees go left and if you like the right arm reaching overhead while the right knee lengthens in the opposite direction Breathe into the space down the right side of the body, especially in the torso, the front of the thigh. And gently bring yourself back to center. Walk the feet in. And bring the knees in once again. This time, we'll do little knee pumps. Hug the knees, give them a little squeeze and release. There's a bit of momentum in this movement too. And so you can decide how, how much enthusiasm uh, you want to give to this. How much of a, a rock feels good for you. So in some bodies, just a little squeeze where the bum just barely lifts up feels like, oh, that's perfect for right now. And then if it feels really good to lift, to rock a little higher up the back or to kick the feet a little bit more over with the rock, you can add that. The choice is yours. Rock a little more. And when you're ready, make your way up to seated, either by rocking or rolling over to your side. Hello and welcome. Sit any way you like. Let's move the head and the neck around a bit. And sit tall. And you can sit if you've got your blankets handy and you want to sit up on them or you want to sit in a chair. You can do that. As you sit tall, with your chin, start to make circles. Any size. Move generously through your circles. And then the other way. And back to center to upright. Roll the shoulders up and back, down and around. Leave the shoulders for a moment. Once again, sit tall. Find your internal puppet string tugging you upward from the crown of the head and rooting you downward from your seat. Looking over one shoulder. Stay right there. Look your eyes into the corner. So as you look over your left shoulder, you're looking into the left side of your eyeballs. 
and then relax your eyes a bit. Come back slowly. Slowly go over to the other side. All the way over until you're looking over the other shoulder and way into the corner of the eyes on that side. And back to center, tilt the head, right ear to the right shoulder, stay there. If you like, the right hand can go to the head, the left arm down low, encouraging a bit more stretch. And then breathe into it and just see, just see how your body would like to move through this. Once again, Continue breath by breath to listen to the body and then trust your intuition as you listen. As you listen. You know, if there's a tender spot that you're working with here, go a little more slowly, a little more lightly as you explore the different ways of moving. Sometimes being still in the stretch might feel just right. Other times moving a bit more, turning and tilting the head reaching the bottom arm out, something like that. Gently release all of the arms and let your chin lower down to the chest. Make your way to the other side, left ear to left shoulder. Breathe while you're here. And left hand might be on the head, right arm down below and off to the side. And suss it out on this side. Right? Maybe this is like, oh, this is the more open side, or it feels like, oh, this is definitely the tighter side. Maybe it feels very familiar, very similar to the first side. Notice what it's like. Keep breathing. You can add a bit more intensity in, term of, in terms of how much the hands are helping. You can add more or less movement, turning, tilting. Breath by breath. Feel your way in. Notice what do you feel in the neck right now. And as you're moving, how is that changing? Where is it now? And where is it now? Where is it now? There are spots that are that are like red flags saying caution, be careful here. Please yield, heed those flags of caution. Continue to explore. And when you're ready, gently release all hands and bring the chin back down to the chest. And slowly lift the head to upright. And bring the hands, one or both, behind the head. And we'll lower the, hand, the chin to the chest once again. You might, while your chin is down, your abs are on, even though this doesn't seem like ab work, use your abs to sit nice and tall. See what the elbows want to do. Do they want to be out to the side? Do they want to lean forward a bit? They'll add to the weight that the neck is supporting. If they're further or closer into the to the face, see what works for you. Imagine this position is intended to lengthen the muscles along the nape of the neck all the way down to the shoulder blades and the upper back. What facilitates that in a in a challenging yet kind way. Really slowly start to raise the head. Maybe a little bit of resistance, but not much. As the head comes up, the hands go with it. And the hands are right here to support the head as your chest lifts, as your chin lifts. And again, there's a touch of resistance between the hands and the head. 
and then see here what the elbows, what's interesting for the elbows. What does it feel like if you take the elbows way out to the sides, like you're trying to press into an imaginary wall behind you? And then what happens if you bring the elbows forward and up toward the ceiling? How does that feel? Does it open up some space in the back bend? Does it support the head? How does it feel just in general? One more time, bring the elbows out to the sides. What is that like? What do you notice? Bring the elbows closer into the head and point it up to the ceiling. And what's that like? I go really slowly. We've been in this tilted position for a bit. Go really slowly. The hands cooperatively coming with the head. Not so much to resist, but assisting. The chin comes down. Keep the elbows in close if it's tolerated well so that the arms can serve as a helper to lengthen the muscles down the nape of the neck. Take a few breaths here. Imagine your shoulder blades are releasing down your back. Then release the arms completely. Slowly and gently bring your head to upright. Ah. Roll the shoulders once again. And this time, create your own custom movement. Moving the shoulders, turning the head. Just say hello to all the, the subtle different ways of moving around. Beautiful. Let's take a twist. Take the left hand across, the right hand behind. Grow tall on an inhale. Twist on an exhale. Unwind a little as you inhale. And twist as you exhale. And do that again, inhale, and twist as you exhale, stay there, find your inner puppet string, crown of the head being lifted upward, shoulders can relax, sitting bones anchoring you evenly, connecting you to the earth. Unwind gently and change sides. And sit tall and twist. Breathe here. Find your inner puppet string here. Lengthen. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Unwind gently. And let's fold forward while we're here. You might unwind your legs. For this forward bend, you can take it with the feet any way you like. I'm going to make a diamond shape Baddha legs with the soles of the feet together and the knees out to the sides. You may wish to have your legs straight or crossed or knees bent in some other fashion. Leaning forward, think of this as a gentle stretch for your back. You can move, if you're using the Baddha legs, you can move the feet further away or closer in. Whatever variation you're in, breathe down the back body. What's it like now? What's it like now? And what's it like now?
Ease your way back to upright. Unwind the legs, move them around a bit. And we'll find our wall patch for our hip stretch. So think of the position of the figure four stretch, like thread the needle, but without holding on at all. The beauty of using the wall for this stretch is that your neck and your shoulders and your jaw, your wrists, don't need to do any work at all in order to get a really nice hip stretch. So I'm gonna scooch in fairly close to the wall and I'll start with both knees bent. Now just like thread the needle can be adjusted so that it's custom fit for you, so can this. So let's all start with the left leg up the wall with the heel resting on the wall. You're not trying to put your butt at the wall. Cross your right ankle over the left thigh like we would for the figure four and then bend your knee so that you can slide the sole of your foot flat to the wall. And you may need to kind of scooch and wriggle around and get comfortable there. But as you bend the knee and you're in the general shape for the hip stretch, do you notice any hip stretch? So if your right, right leg is uh, crossed over on the top, notice what's happening in the right outer hip or the, the buttock area deep, like underneath the glute deep. And if it, you feel the stretch, stay right there. If you feel a tiny bit of stretch or none at all, take a moment and uncross your legs and scoot your bum in closer to the wall and try the thing again. Cross the right ankle, bend the left knee. What's it like from this distance? And so for my friends who feel a little too comfortable, you can come all the way to the wall. And this is only if you're not getting a hip stretch and also if your hamstrings are like, okay, I'll tolerate this. But otherwise you're further away from the wall, bending the knee and breathe. So for, I, for my practice, I find that my hips are, are quite tight in some directions. In this direction, I want, I, my legs go quite close to the chest. That's just kind of how the architecture of my hips um, is set up. So you may notice you want more space or less space. Listen to what your body is feeling. And again, notice if you're getting that outer right buttock area stretch. Because if it's really arduous, but you're not getting the hip stretch, you're missing that good stuff. You don't want to miss out. And again, the arms, they can do whatever they want. They are not required. Stay right here, breathe down the back body. Breathe, let the muscles in the back of the neck lengthen. Breathe, let the back lengthen and relax. Unwind your legs, stretch the legs up the wall and change sides. Left ankle crosses on top and the right knee bends. Sometimes, as we're crossing the leg over, one hip will hike up toward its own armpit. So be aware that sometimes that happens and try to keep your, your torso even so that the distance from your right armpit to, it, to the right hip is equal to the distance from the left armpit to its hip. That'll give you a more effective hip stretch without adding a, a side bend in the spine. It's not that it's wrong to have it, it just doesn't help the stretch for the hip. 
What it mostly does is makes it look like something more is stretching in the hip, but actually it's the low back compensating for the movement. So it won't hurt you. And take a few more breaths here, back body long, long down the nape of the neck, long down into the low back and hips. And this side may have its own unique personality. So play your edge here. Unwind the legs. Now, if you like, come closer to your wall. And this is where we start to listen, not to the outer hips so much, but to the backs of the legs. So only touch the wall with your bum if your hamstrings are really happy with that situation. And if your butt doesn't have to lift up the, off the floor to facilitate it, then once you're as close to the wall as your hamstrings allow, start to slide the legs out wider. Now they might, the knees may need to bend in order for this to be comfortable. The legs may be happy straight. It is your body, this is your practice. If you run into furniture, you can do one side and, and then the other or use the furniture as your support. Aim for the pelvis to be even. And so that may mean adjusting the position of one of the legs to, just so as not to tilt the whole pose all over to one side. Keep it kind of symmetrical. Take a breath in and out. And if you like, and if it's well tolerated, take your hands. You can use soft fists or you can use the heel of the hand and the palm of the hand. Take the hands right up. I'm going to use my palms and heel of the hand right up to the upper, upper, upper thigh and press your th upper thigh bones toward the wall in a way that makes you feel like your, your spine is getting longer. Right? You're, I'm pressing the thigh bones away. My spine is getting longer, 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 longer. Like it, like it can telescopically lengthen due to this, um, this pressure, this traction. And then gradually relax that, bend the knees, and bring the soles of the feet toward the wall in Baddha Konasana legs, Baddha Konasana legs up the wall. Soles of the feet together, knees out wide, and here again, you can completely leave the legs alone if you wish, or you can do a bit of, of efforting. Again, don't go bananas with the efforting. If we're stretching, we want to still be able to breathe. So you could take the hands somewhere on the thighs and give them a bit of a push toward the wall. So there's resistance, but don't make it like an all out war with yourself. Resistance that helps the body to gradually open or to find some space where maybe we didn't think there was space before. If it gets too much, ease up. Sometimes easing up a little does the trick. Sometimes coming out completely does the trick. And if today it feels like the resistance isn't what your body needs, then use your hands instead. Like I'm holding now my legs and supporting them rather than pushing them. And when you're ready, walk the feet apart and send the legs up the wall. Bend your knees. If it feels really crowded and you'd like more room, you can scooch further away from the wall. And we'll take a spinal twist. Bend the knees and walk your feet, like walk them in an arc so that your legs come over to the side and you're in a twist. 
breathe here if using your blankets is useful if you want a blanket or two underneath one knee or between the knees you can do that that can often make the twist more comfortable breathing in breathing out Take a breath in here, and as you exhale, start changing sides. Walk the feet over, over, over. The same thing here. Blanket underneath or between or both. Underneath the leg, between the knees or both. Breathe here. Feel the gentle spinal twist. Walk the, the feet back in. Almost said hands. Walk the feet back in and take the legs up the wall. So, with your legs up the wall, if this is comfortable, you can leave your legs just like this. Take Shavasana with legs up the wall. Legs up the wall is a pose that's usually recommended to relieve fatigue in the legs. Or if your ankles or feet are swollen, if you've been standing for long periods, this position can really be useful. Again, get only as close to the wall as your hamstrings allow, because if you're really forcing yourself to be close and your hamstrings are tight, there's, it adds a lot of tension to the pose that we don't want for Shavasana. And then if you want a little bit of extra height to the inversion, lifting the pelvis up higher than the height, than the heart rather, that's where these other blankets come in. I'm gonna use two stacked. So it's roughly the size of like, if you have a yoga bolster handy, you could use a yoga bolster instead. You can of course use two blankets. So first I bend my knees and I'm gonna lift my hips up kind of like doing bridge pose on the wall bridge pose up the wall and then i'm sliding the blankets underneath and i'll set my pelvis back down and in this case i'm going to want just a little bit of space between my blankets and the wall it's almost like a little gully for part of my bum so my spine's in neutral not tucked under Now, if that feels comfortable with the little extra height for the pelvis, now I've got this extra level in the inversion where my heart is just a touch lower than my pelvis as well as lower than the legs. Arrange it so it works for you. Make comfort adjustments as needed. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Let the legs rest on the wall. If at any time they're getting numb and tingly, you can cross your legs or bend your knees at the wall or gently come down if you need to. Take care of yourself first and foremost. Feel the support beneath the back body. And let yourself receive the replenishment and restoration from deep in the earth.
Let the facial muscles rest. Let the jaw relax. Breathing in, breathing out. Stay right here and rest. Relax the neck. body melt. Begin deepening the breath. Take your time. Raise the arms gently overhead. And roll the head side to side. the ankles and feet on the wall, bend the knees. When you're ready, bend the knees, slide the feet down. Now, if you are have been doing the supported version, if you've got a blanket underneath you, I recommend lifting up just enough to slide the blanket out from underneath you, and returning down to a flat position, and then gently rolling to your side. Pause a moment and use your hands, easing up to seated. And sit tall and close your eyes for a moment. Bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, lower the chin. May you be protected from inner and outer harm. May you be truly happy and deeply peaceful. May you see the beauty of your own inner goodness and may you share it with those you come in contact with. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. 
Namaste. Thank you.